Hi. You're no doubt familiar with modern credit cards like this one that have an RFID chip embedded in them, or tap and go as it's called here in Australia, might be called different things in other countries, actually contain a radio frequency identification device, an RFID chip in them, and no, it's not this thing here, that's the um, uh, secure chip and uh, pin thing, it's actually embedded elsewhere in the card, and it's, it goes under various uh, names, could be Visa Pay Wave, or it could be MasterCard Pay Pass, or various other uh, names depending on which uh, provider you've got but they all work on the same RFID technology we can just use your credit card like this just to tap and go as the name suggests you just tap it onto a reader like this if you've got a reader you can just go like that bam hold it there for a second or two and you've instantly paid for your transaction in Australia at least it's up to a hundred dollars no need to enter your pin number no need to insert your card no need to swipe it on the back or anything like that tap and go beautiful but it's not without its uh, security concerns. And my interest in this came about because uh, Mrs. EEV blog got a new uh, handbag here. It's a Giannotti brand for those playing along at home. And it came with this. Look, RFID blocking technology to assist you in protecting your credit cards against identity theft. Uh, Sandler now uses data blocking technology. Concealed within this bag or backpack is an RFID protective fabric inside the credit card section that helps block illegal scanning devices and assists the prevention of data and identity theft. Fantastic! But does it actually work? Let's test it. Now let's just talk briefly about the uh, RFID technology in here. There's actually a coil all the way around the card in here that actually does not contrary to popular belief, act as an antenna, because this is not an RF-based system. It's, the term RFID is a little bit deceptive in this case. It actually works like a transformer. And if we have a look at another card here, we can actually see the coil inside there. Check it out. It, it, it'll go around like that. The chip will be embedded in there somewhere. Not exactly sure where it is. It doesn't matter. But you can see that there's a couple of turns going around in there somewhere and what it's doing is acting as a transformer like this. Let's go to DaveCAD. So this is the receiver part of it here. This could be the phone like we're going to use today. It could be a legitimate device at the supermarket or on the bus that you want to tap and go and pay with or it can be a scamming, uh, skimming device that people can uh, walk by you and actually uh, once if they get close enough then they can actually um, potentially uh, get your card details and actually do a transaction on your card. They can't actually get your credit card information, but they can do an actual uh, transaction, as I said, up to the value of $100. Anyway, this is the receiver like this, and the receiver generates a constant 13, or packets, of 13.56 megahertz uh, sine wave. And it's a transformer coupled system. The coil inside the credit card actually forms the secondary of a transformer here. So even though it's called RFID because it, RF is used in some other uh, variants of it, it's actually a magnetic field uh, a traditional transformer coupled like this. And the chip inside your credit card here actually gets power from this coil. So once you get these two uh, close enough, there's a little uh, rectifier in there. Uh, this is grossly uh, simplified, but hey, this is basically how it works. It generates uh, power for the chip, and then the chip can drive a transistor, which then can modulate the load on the secondary side. And that will reflect back, due to transformer action, the magnetic fields, you can actually get the modulation on here and it'll send as we'll see uh, in a minute it'll send like a packet of uh, 13.56 megahertz data like this and then if this chip if the protocol's right and everything matches up then this will uh, use a transistor to uh, put a load across the coil and modulate it and for the ISO 1443 protocol which we're talking about here which is used in these uh, types of modern credit cards then it's going to modulate that amplitude modulate it at a frequency of four hundred uh, eight hundred and four 47.5 kilohertz and then the reader can read back that data and they can communicate and transfer information easy but the important thing to note here is this is not an RF system. These are not antennas. This is a transformer. It works on magnetic fields instead of an RF field.
So we can take a modern smartphone and use this as an NFC reader. They've got NFC capability built in, 13.56 megahertz. There are different frequencies uh, for different RFID systems, but the uh, credit cards use 13.56, and that's what the uh, modern smartphones do. At least I'm not aware of any smartphones that do the other uh, frequencies. But we can use this um, as just an app from uh, Research Lab Hagenberg. It's just a free app you can get to uh, read the information from these cards. So we can put our tag in there. And it's just reading tag. Doesn't take a minute. New tag detected. And we've and it, we've got it. We've read all the information that we can from this card. Of course, I can't get the money from it because I don't have the ability to do transactions. But hey, criminals can potentially do this. So I won't go into the tag information. It might reveal something about my card here. But um, anyway, it's you know you can get like the hex dump data out of the card and everything else. And you don't actually have to have them touching. Um, you can actually have them a distance apart, but there is a limit to how far you can have them apart due to the uh, transformer action losses because it's a pretty poor transformer. It's an air cord. So the idea behind these uh, bags, you can buy and you can get wallets as well with this RFID protection technology. And does it work? Well, I actually don't necessarily doubt it because it's not hugely hard to actually shield against this. But as I said, it's not a Faraday cage uh, issue. It's not an RF issue. It's a magnetic field issue. So, you know, ideally you'd want uh, what's called mu metal, which actually uh, shields out uh, magnetic fields. Now take something like this uh, die-cast aluminium box, for example. You're used to using these to shield your electronics and stuff from uh, EMI, right? Now these are quite effective at RF, uh, of course, but for magnetic fields, not so much. But really, the problem is uh, with magnetic fields, um, die-cast aluminium like this or alfoil or anything else um, really is, uh, you know, pretty decent at high-frequency uh, stuff. But at low-frequency, low-frequency magnetic fields, like down in the kilohertz and things like that, these aren't really effective against magnetic fields. But the good news is, is that uh, these things operate at 13.56 megahertz. So something like this die-cast box or some alfoil is going to work a treat at those high frequencies, even though at low frequencies, even something this thick would actually be pretty useless at shielding magnetic fields. So let's not muck around, let's try it. Let's get our credit card inside the outer sleeve of this bag and scanned it. There we go, no problems whatsoever. This bag does not work in the outer pocket, but it doesn't claim to. If we go back and read the fine print, there's a protective fabric inside the credit card section. So only the credit card section. So the rest of the bag, if you've got uh, this card inside your wallet, inside the bag, and it's not specifically inside the credit card section, eh, you're not protected at all. And you'll see inside this bag, it looks kind of like magnetic-y, but uh, if you put your credit card inside any part of this inside here, or this outer pocket, as we saw, then it does absolutely nothing apart from a physical distance uh, thing, getting extra losses in the transformer. You've got to actually put the card inside here. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it feels different. It feels like there's some metal foil or something inside this section. So let's whack our card in there, shall we? And we'll try and read it. Here we go. Or the outside of the bag like this. And you'll see that it doesn't scan at all. So it works. Um, and that's not terribly, you know, surprising. There's nothing magical about this. But look, if I put inside this other pocket over here and try and read it, Bingo, it's going through multiple layers, no problems, of this bag and right through there. So it only works if you put it inside the section like this. So that might protect you against a wimpy little uh, phone like this, but what if uh, the criminals have some, you know, super high power uh, transmitter slash uh, receiver that can, you know, generate a bigger magnetic field and read data back? Well, how effective might this be? Well, we can actually do, get some uh, quantitative measurements with a uh, near field uh, H probe, these are called, because it's a magnetic field. This is not an electric field probe. It's a magnetic field. You've seen these in my videos before. Uh, it's a dead giveaway. It's a magnetic field because you can see the coil there. And we can actually stick this in between the credit card and here, and we can pick up the magnetic field, and we'll be able to see it on the scope. Beauty. 
And of course, you don't need to buy one of these fancy, pantsy, expensive uh, shielding handbags or wallets or whatever. Um, you can just use owl foil like this, and this is a common trick you see on the internet. Um, so let's see if we can read that tag under there. No, we can't. Just a single layer of owl foil like that is more than enough. If I take that away now, bingo, we'll read it. No problems whatsoever. So just a single layer of owl foil is enough to attenuate that, even though the magnetic field, as I'll show you in a minute, is actually still getting through there. It attenuates it enough to actually cause a problem. And there is a bit of a myth going around that if you have two credit cards in your wallet in close proximity or back to back like this, that they'll cancel out and they'll get, you know, conflict and you won't be able to uh, read the data out of it and you'll be completely safe. You don't need any magnetic shielding whatsoever. Well, that's not really true because the uh, ISO standard 1443, which uh, determines the protocol and everything to do with uh, this RFID uh, technology, actually has an anti-collision thing as part of the protocol for both type A and type B cards. So we can, hopefully, it might, it, it, could make an idiot. It's going to make a fool out of me. No, there we go. New tag detected. Okay, so you can actually get a point where they sort of do interfere with each other and it causes a problem, but you can still, you can still do it. You saw we could actually, there we go. We can get it to read that no problem. So that really isn't protected. That myth busted. Okay, so let's use our uh, H-Field probe, which goes from, uh, you know, basically kilohertz up to uh, several gigahertz. So it should easily be able to read our 13.56 megahertz. Let's put that on the back here and we'll see that uh, when you've got uh, uh, NFC enabled on your phone, it's reading all the time. Periodically, actually sending out these packets like this trying to uh, wake up the card that's in any card that's in proximity to it and then looking, uh, sending out a code to enable it and then looking for modulation coming back. And if we single shot capture that and go in here, you'll see that this is basically, bingo, whoop, there it is, 13.55, 13.56 5, megahertz. That's our carrier frequency and it's sinusoidal. All right, so let's put our card behind our phone here and watch what happens when we put it in there bingo you should have seen some modulation there so let's see if we can capture that and you'll notice that it's actually continually stayed on now that that card is in the field if we take it away bam it goes back like that now i've captured some data here and you can see that uh before this uh trigger point here here's our 13.56 megahertz it's actually the look it actually uh goes down to zero this is the uh receiver or in this case the transmitter actually doing that and we've got different types of data if we go over here and have a look we can see this is the return data coming from the card itself and this is the uh, amplitude modulated data we can go in here and have a squeeze at that there it is it's just amplitude modulated so that is the uh, credit card actually modulating that turning on the transistor loading down the coil and modulating that data back at what frequency well let's measure it and bingo using our uh, x cursors there we can get 847.46 kilohertz that's exactly what i said the modulation frequency was before so yep the iso standard is exactly as it says now, if we have a look at the distance between the uh, card and the phone like this, then we can actually, I'm on uh, 200 millivolts per division. We'll be able to see the amplitude difference. I'll go down like this. I've got that, I don't know, a fair distance away. Will we be able to get something? Yep, and it's lower amplitude, of course, but even at that sort of distance, um, you know, there's still something there. It's not enough to actually connect to the card, uh, but hey, if you had a more powerful uh, reader, you know, if you're a criminal, you had a more powerful reader, you're trying to um, skim cards and things like that, you can do it at a greater distance. Okay, so let's try the owl foil now. Okay, so I'm down at uh, 10 millivolts per division. The absolute value doesn't matter. It's just relative to uh, 200 millivolts per division we were at before. And yeah, I'm able to, you know, get something. But if I take away the owl foil, of course, then whammo, we're completely off scale now. There we go. All right, so I've got my credit card inside the shielded thing. I'll whack my uh, probe in there and we'll give that a burl.
Yeah, we're still getting something at 50 millivolts per division, but you know, it's it's really right down there. You'd have to have a super powerful, uh, you know, transmitter side to actually, you know, uh, generate in a much larger magnetic field than this one's capable of to actually get that, I suspect. But it, it's probably not 100% secure, but you know, I, I think it's going to be good enough. I, I think these sorts of uh, shielded handbags and wallets will actually do what they claim. And if you're wondering about the uh, die-cast alloy box, then, yep, that's at uh, 2 millivolts per division. There's just, oh, did we get something? No, that was just me marking around. Yeah, that's going to be pretty effective, as you'd expect. But uh, not 100% effective against magnetic fields. But in the case of the uh, amount of field we're talking about with the RFID here at that frequency, then, yeah, these things do work. Okay, just for kicks, I'm going to see if we can capture the uh, increase in magnetic field as we get closer. So I'll single shot capture that, and I'll bring it in. Don't like our chances, but, uh, oh, yeah. That's quite reasonable. There we go. We started here and we can see it getting bigger and bigger, but it wasn't close enough uh, to actually uh, capture the data, like, you know, to sync and do the protocol and uh, talk to the card and get the data before it got, you know, fairly close, like an inch away or something like that. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, whether or not you believe that, you know, you're really at threat just walking around with your unexposed uh, credit cards in your wallet and things like that. And the odds are ridiculously low that somebody's going to uh, skim you or something like that. But, you know, they don't necessarily have to walk through you. They could uh, set it up in a door frame, for example. Yeah, as you walk through, they could get you because you can couple the magnetic field uh, like that as you walk through. And there's many other ways uh, to do it, but they have to do a transaction. It's not like the money just magically vanishes uh, from your account. Uh, you know, it's got to be a uh, transaction and things like that. So, yeah, not 100% secure uh, technology, but, hey, confirm. Uh, these bags and presumably the wallets, they've probably just got alfoil in them anyway. <laughs> and alfoil does quite a reasonable job. Just a single layer of alfoil can actually uh, protect your cards pretty good. So, yeah, you know, if you're paranoid about these things, don't wear it on your head. Just stick it in your wallet. Catch you next time. Hi, it's Teardown Tuesday again. Got something a little bit different. It's one of these broad electric toothbrushes. You've seen them. It sits on one of these chargers. Wireless uh, power transfer to charge the internal battery. We crack it open and check it out. Not only what's inside here, but what's inside the charger as well. Let's take a look. Could be interesting. There you go. It drops down and if you remove another one, it drops down again. But actually, 